clinical examinations that are commonly used to test the function and the integrity of the ulnar nerve. The first muscle that is innervated by the ulnar nerve is the flexor carpi and nares, as you can see here in this diagram. Test flexion of the wrist against resistance. That will test the flexor carpi and nares. To test the function of the flexor carpi and nares muscle, have the patient flex the wrist against resistance in an under direction. Test flexion of the fifth finger against resistance. That will test the function of the flexor digitorum profundus. To test the function of the flexor digitorum profundus, have the patient flex the DIP joint of the fifth finger against resistance. The medial part of the flexor digitorum profundus is supplied by the ulnar nerve. Test abduction of the little finger against resistance. Then you will test the abductor digiti minimi. The abductor digiti minimi allows for abduction of the little finger away from the other fingers. The function of the abductor digiti minimi is tested by asking the patient to abduct the little finger against resistance. Test abduction of the index finger against resistance. And that will test the first dorsal interossei. Function of the first dorsal interosseous muscle is tested by asking the patient to abduct the index finger against resistance. The first dorsal interosseous muscle can be seen and evaluated on the dorsum of the hand. Severe atrophy of the first dorsal interosseous muscle could indicate a bad prognosis for recovery of the unknown nerve. This condition could be associated with a claw hand deformity. Always check for clawing of the fourth and fifth fingers. The ulnar claw hand deformity is a symptom of a lower ulnar nerve entrapment below the elbow and typically causes flexion and clawing of the fourth and fifth fingers due to unopposed action of the medial part of the flexor digitorum profundus muscle. From and sign, it relies on the adductor pollicis. When the adductor pollicis muscle is weak, thumb adduction will not occur. The Framan sign is used to test the function of the adductor pollicis muscle. Here is the examiner hand having a piece of paper in his hand. And when pinching a piece of paper between the thumb and the index finger, the thumb IP joint will flex if the adductor pollicis muscle is weak when there's an ulnar nerve palsy, as you can see on the left side of the screen in this patient. This is the normal pinching because of normal ulnar nerve. And this is the abnormal pinching because of an ulnar nerve injury. As a result of the ulnar nerve entrapment and the injury, the patient is unable to cross or abduct the fingers. Abduction of the fingers comes from the palmar pad interossei. Abduction of the fingers comes from the dorsal dab interossei. At the elbow, the ulnar nerve travels through a tunnel of tissue, cubital tunnel, that runs under the medial epicondyle. Tinel sign. It is a tapping technique performed to test for symptoms of the ulnar nerve entrapment at the elbow. You're testing for cubital tunnel syndrome. Elbow flexion test. The elbow flexion test is used to check for symptoms of cubital tunnel syndrome. The patient is asked to fully flex the elbow with the shoulder in some abduction. 
At the elbow flexes, the area of the cubital tunnel becomes narrow and compresses the nerve, as you can see here in this diagram. Holding this position may result in tingling or parathesia in the ulnar distribution of the forearm or hand. In addition to elbow flexion, adding wrist flexion in an ulnar direction will aggravate the symptoms of cubital tunnel syndrome and induce parathesia due to contraction of the flexor carbi annaris muscle. This is the ulnar nerve area of sensation. The palmar cutaneous branch of the ulnar nerve provides sensation to the palm of the hand. The finger sensation is provided by the superficial branch of the ulnar nerve. How about the dorsal sensation of the hand? The dorsal cutaneous branch give innervation to the medial dorsal aspect of the hand and to the medial one and a half fingers. Injury of the ulnar nerve in Guyane's canal. The Guyane's canal is approximately 4 cm long. Both the ulnar nerve and artery enter the Guyane's canal. The Guyane's canal contains the ulnar nerve with its superficial sensory and deep motor branches. The ulnar nerve compression neuropathy can occur in the Guyane's canal. The most common causes include volar ganglion cyst. The volar ganglion cyst may protrude and grow, which could compress the ulnar nerve. This is an illustration that shows the Guyane's canal in relationship to the carpal tunnel. If you have a ganglia or a cyst in Guyane's canal, it will definitely compress the ulnar nerve in this tight space. Compression of the deep branch of the ulnar nerve is important because this deep branch of the ulnar nerve innervates all of the interossei muscle and the third and the fourth lumbricals. It also innervates the hypothenar muscles, the adductor pollicis muscles, and the deep head of the flexor pollicis brevis muscle. The adductor pollicis muscle weakness will give you a positive Froman's test. The superficial branch of the ulnar nerve is mainly sensory. It gives the innervation to the fourth and fifth fingers on the volar aspect of the hand. This is an illustration of the area of sensation for the superficial and for the palmar branches of the ulnar nerve. What is the presentation and the symptoms of ulnar nerve injury in Guyane's canal? The patient may present with pain and parathesia in the ulnar one and a half digits, glowing of the fourth and fifth fingers, loss of the intrinsics. It normally flexes the MCP joints and extends the IP joints. In low ulnar nerve injury, the flexor digitorum profundus is working, flexing the fourth and the fifth fingers, and the intrinsics are not working, and this is causing the clawing of the fourth and fifth fingers. You may find atrophy and wasting of the first dorsal interosseous muscle. This abduction of the index finger against resistance. There will be weak pinch. 70% of the pinch is lost due to loss of the adductor muscle. The Froman's test will be positive due to weakness of the adductor muscle. And here you can see how the Froman's test is done. When pinching a piece of paper between the thumb and index finger, the thumb IP joint will flex if the adductor pollicis muscle is weak due to ulnar nerve injury. The MRI is usually useful to evaluate the ganglion cyst. Ultrasound may be helpful 
especially if you are concerned about vascular problems in Guyenne's canal. If there is a ganglion cyst and you decompress it or remove it, the patient's symptoms will get better. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.